Welcome to the Hewlett Packard Enterprise Around the Storage Block video blog. I'm your host, HPE Storage Guy Calvin Zito. Hey, so I have the opportunity to be at Hewlett Packard Enterprise here in Houston and thought, hey, we got an announcement coming here soon with new Gen 10 servers and was able to get Shrikanth to spend some time with me. Shrikanth, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Sure. My name is Shrikanth Raghavan. I'm the ProLiant Portfolio Planner for Rackmon Servers. And you know, we've got a couple of different servers we're going to look at, but in this video we want to look at the DL380 Gen 10. So for people that are watching this, what's the one thing you want them to walk away with about the DL380 Gen 10? Yeah, we, uh, the, the way we refer to DL380 is it is the no compromise data center standard for multi-workload compute because it's so versatile, it can do so many things. And let's face it, Gen 9 has been amazingly successful. It's the world's leading platform for virtualized servers, isn't it? Correct, yeah. It has been the number one x86 server for 82 quarters in a row. Uh, as Did you say as eight? Eighty-two. Eighty-two. Eighty-two quarters in a row. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's unfair. <laughs> it's almost unfair, but that's that's how the server is. It is so versatile. It has a very well distributed set of resources, so you can configure and expand in any way you want. So that's the great thing about the server. Well, how about if we take a look at it? Absolutely. Let's go. So what are we looking at here? So here we have the uh, ProLiant Gen 10 DL380 system. We have both a large form factor chassis and small form factor chassis. Uh, there are tons of hardware updates in Gen 10. We'll start with ILO 5. We have a brand new ASIC here that comes with a significant improvement from security perspective and also from management perspectives. Uh, we have introduced a hardware root of trust that allows for a secure boot. That's pretty significant differentiation because usually you only have a software-based uh, root of trust uh, in, uh, in embedded management. It also comes with significant uh, management capabilities. We have support for Redfish. We have support for um, uh, firmware that could be staged, scheduled, and rolled back. We also have a brand new ILO port that we are introducing, which is in front of the server chassis. A user could just plug a USB key and can download support logs and can uh, send that to support center very quickly. Uh, if you have a laptop, you could connect your laptop to the ILO port and you can actually bring up the ILO console and manage the server right there. So that's a significant uh, piece of improvement we have done for ILO uh, in Gen 10. Uh, if we move into the hardware side, uh, this is the large form factor chassis. It is mainly used for applications like email exchange server, cold storage for uh, cloud storage nodes, the Gen 9 large form factor chassis had support for 12 drives in the front and 3 in the rear, a total of 15. This is getting a significant improvement in Gen 10. We are adding a brand new set of drives that goes right in the middle of the chassis, that's 4 drives. And you can, along with these 4 drives, you can also have 2 more small form factor drives that sits in the rear of the chassis. So. In total, you can have up to 19 large form factor drives, 12, three in the rear and four in the middle, plus the two small form factor drives. So you can have up to 194 terabytes of storage in 2U space, which is pretty significant. Wow, yeah. We also have a new option for large form factor drives, which is uh, eight. We only used to have a four and a 12. So now we have eight. Uh, that can be upgraded. There's a choice for Universal Media Bay, which has an optical drive and also has uh, room for two small form factor drives. This can also be upgraded uh, to the middle row of large form factor drives that we talked about. Okay. That's it. That's it for large form factor drives. So now we're looking at the small form factor uh, enclosure, right? Correct, yeah. This is the, the, the modular design that we have for small form factor. Uh, this is mainly used for um, high performance storage options. This is a uh, very interchangeable design. You can have SAS SATA drives, you could have NVMe drives. This is the traditional design where we have uh, three by eight drive cages that can be a combination of drives. You can also have a premium uh, drive cage where you have six plus two, six plus two, six plus two the two being PCIe SSD drives. This is very important for some of the newer applications that use a lot of caching and tiering. You have a mix and match combination of fast drives and extremely fast drives to take care of those writes. So that's an excellent option. 
By itself, you can also go up to 20 NVMe drives in total in DO380. So you can have 8 plus 8 plus 4 drives. The NVMe drive cage pretty much looks like the regular drive cage except for the connectors in the back, which is all PCIe connectors, but it looks and feels exactly the same as any other drive cage. Now, um, in the 24 small form factor drive, there is also an option to have six drives in the rear. Uh, so you can go up to a total of 30 drives. This becomes important for running really large databases that demand a lot of in-server storage. One example that comes to mind is financial institutions running a lot of analytics on years worth of data, data warehousing, where they're trying to uh, predict information. So it's a great application for that, for software-defined storage, for some of the new hyper-converged applications that demand a lot of storage in the box. Great option for, uh, for those applications. So along with uh, the, the small form factor drive, uh, you see that we also have one additional PCIe slot in Gen 10. Now, uh, in spite of the eight PCIe slots, you still get to keep the AROC and the Flex LOM. So it's eight PCIe slots plus Flex LOM plus AROC. The additional PCIe slots allow us to support more GPUs in the system. This is something new in Gen 10. In Gen 9, we had support for two double-wide GPUs and three single-wide GPUs. And because of this additional PCIe slot, now we can support up to three double-wide GPUs. This is pretty significant, and it goes back to the flexibility that I talk about when we talk DL380, because DL380 is the most configurable server in general. So having uh, the large form factor options to the small form factor options and moving into three GPUs, suddenly now we are looking at configuring this to be a great graphics acceleration server, if that's your end application. With three GPUs, whether it is a regular BDI application, gra graphics application, or just general compute, GPG, GPU type application for scientific computing, you can configure the server the way you want. Um, another upgrade that you have across the board for DL380 is uh, indeed, it'll support all the um, uh, the latest Intel Xeon scalable processors. We will support all the way up to 205 watts, which is the highest in the stack. Uh, so between the two CPUs and uh, the 24 DIMMs, you can have a maximum memory of um, uh, uh, three terabytes in DL380. You will notice that the uh, the DIMM lanes are slightly uh, different. Uh, we are moving to a six by two, meaning six channels with two DIMMs each per processor. So still total of 24 uh, in a two socket pro, uh, system, but you have six by two. That allows us to have achieve higher memory speeds because you only have two DIMM slots uh, per channel. Uh, the next significant thing I would like to talk about is persistent memory. So now we introduced persistent memory in Gen 9 with the Broadwell servers. So this is the best of both worlds. You have the persistence of storage and you have the acceleration, the speed of memory. So we introduced 8 gig DIMMs um, and you could have it up to 16 slots, can have 8 gig DIMMs. So a total of 128 NV DIMMs was supported until now. In Gen 10, you are going to see a significant improvement in capacity. Not only are we adding support for 16 GB DIMMs, we can also have up to a total of 192 gigs of NV DIMMs. <clears throat> this is great for all the in-memory applications where you are moving transactional data as close as possible to the CPU and you're processing that at a much faster rate. What we have seen in initial experiments and some of the uh, reference architectures that we have out there is that all the software licenses which are core based, you can reduce the cost of it significantly because of the performance improvement. Along with that, you're also using less number of cores because you're getting to your end result at a much faster pace. Really appreciate the time you spent with me today helping me look at and understand the DL380 Gen 10. For people that want to learn more, where can they find more about the uh, DL380 Gen 10? Yeah, they can go to uh, hpe.com slash info slash DL380 Gen 10, and you'll have a lot of information there. Okay, well, thanks again for joining me. Thank you. If you've got any questions, you can always find me on Twitter as Calvin Zito. You can find our blog at hpe.com slash storage slash blog. Until next time. Thanks for joining me.